We're going to record this so we can share with people who aren't able to join us um, today. Uh, Festus, I'm hoping that you can talk to us about whose requirement it is that child care centers have to get a prior approval from licensure before they can spend funds out of the child care strong grants on renovations, what the process is, and even in light of the con time constraints for having to spend this by September of this year, whether you would support the idea of extending the grant deadline to September of next year as the HHS guidelines allow. So if you would be willing to walk through uh, the process um, and speak to those questions, that would be great. So I'll turn the floor over to you. Thank you, Carol. Before you start, will you have everybody put their phones and this devices on mute so it won't be a disruption? Yes, thank you for that request. Let me just uh, echo that concern. If, if all of you would please mute your phones and your computers, that would help us to be able to hear Festus. And also, if you have questions that you would like to ask, if you will put those in the chat, we'll get to those when Festus is finished with his presentation. Okay, thanks Festus, sorry. <laughs> Well, thank you, Carol, for inviting us. Uh, some of my staff are online with us today. We also have um, Dennis Kelly from the Department of uh, Environmental Quality uh, that he might be able to uh, um, assist and correct me if I go astray. Uh, uh, first thing I want to say is that... Zero, zero. Yes, zero, zero. That um, we hope everybody can. Uh, Pestis, utilize I, I have a suggestion. I'm going to mute everyone, but it's going to mute you too. So after I do that, if you would unmute yourself so you could speak, then um, maybe that will that will uh, minimize the background noise. How about that? Again, I want to thank, I appreciate Carol for inviting us to uh, address uh, everybody today. Uh, I understand there are a lot of questions that have come up uh, and I hope to be able to uh, provide some uh, explanation of what's been going on. Uh, we really hope that everybody can utilize these uh, child care strong grants to good uh, to improve the, the uh, services to the children uh, that you serve. <clears throat> One of the things that um, when these grants came up, the people were talking about renovations. And let me give you a little history about this. Um, when this first came about, Department of Human Services, and, and, I, and, and this is my understanding of it and, and what I experienced, said that any renovation to the child care facility had to be the result of a deficiency that was noted during an inspection of the child care facility prior to April 1st, 2021. And I guess the, that raised concerns with providers. They went to Department of Human Services and they revised that requirement. And the revision was that to be approved for a renovation, the Department of Health had to, uh, to be approved for reimbursement of the renovation through the grant. The facility had to get, we had, the Department of Health had to approve 
the renovation. And um, so we were we working with Department of Human Services. Uh, what we did, it was just referred back to the regulations. And I sent out several emails and um, regarding renovations. And I quoted the regulations. And I also quoted uh, the requirements of DEQ, which is in statute. Um, the regulations state in subchapter 11, buildings and grounds, rule 1.11.1, and this was sent out to all child care providers uh, in, in a pretty extensive um, email. Um, number five states, plans and specifications shall be submitted to the licensing agency for review and approval of all proposed constructions and or major renovations. That rule has been in the book on the books for at least 20 years. So that is nothing new. Um, <clears throat> so that, that, that's the first thing that, that is required. And my understanding is, and it has been demonstrated that some people started renovations and did not provide or follow the regulations. Now, further, um, the Department of Human Services has said that we have to approve the renovation before they will reimburse for it under the grant. So first we had to be notified that you were doing a renovation and we found out that in, in sometimes, even as far as back as in December, people were doing major renovations to the facility and we had no knowledge of it whatsoever. And once that became known, you know, we, uh, we told them that they need to follow the regulations. And then, you know, somebody will come in and say, I want to knock out this wall and uh, I'm going to make, uh, make uh, two rooms. I'm going to add an addition to my building and we can come out and, you know, they're supposed to submit the, um, the specifications and you know, uh, of what's going to be done. And that's pledged. It doesn't have to, doesn't have to be a blueprint. It could be a, a, a drawn floor plan like we require right now for square footage and things like that. And if it look, if it makes sense, you know, we would say, yes, you can go on and, and, and uh, make that renovation. Now, the thing is, if you're doing a major renovation, is defined as anything that disturbs more than 24 square feet in the building. That's about the size of a big door. And uh, so if you're going to do a major renovation, um, one of the things that, that you then have to look for is All, uh, it's in um, item nine of that same regulation, B, all buildings intended for use as a child care facility constructed prior to 1978 shall utilize MDEQ lead safe certified individuals or companies for all renovation, repair and maintenance activities which disturb painted surfaces unless the paint to be disturbed has been documented to be lead free by an individual or a company that is MDEQ lead safe certified 
as a risk assessor or inspector. And I gave a, we gave a telephone number in the regulations to contact DEQ uh, about that. Now, one of the things that also in the information we sent out is that by state law, buildings built before 1978 also have to have asbestos um, uh, you know, uh, testing for asbestos before uh, doing the major renovation. And that's in state law. That is not a, that's not a regulation under child care. It's a state law um, on the books in Mississippi. So that would also have to be done. And if when, con when people contacted us about the requirements, we, we, we also, when we sent this information out to everybody, we sent DEQ documents showing the law and having everybody uh, about the asbestos and the lead requirements um, before renovations are done. So um, what we then ask people to do is, if you're going to do a renovation, you contact your licensing official, tell them what you want to do, submit to them the, the, the plans and stuff like that, that you, what you're planning to do, and we can take a look at it and come out and take a visit, go a visit, and uh, and sit there and say, you know this makes sense. You can do that. It's going to be a major renovation. You're going to knock out just for example, you're going to knock out three walls. You're going to add on to your building. That's going to entail a whole lot of constructions. You cannot have the children there while that major construction is going on. Because if something, if the facility does have asbestos or lead, um, that dust can migrate into the other classrooms and be a potential health uh, risk. So, you know, you'd have to make arrangements to move to a either shut down or move to a new location, an emergency location, while the uh, construction is being undertaken. And you cannot come back into the building uh, until it's been approved uh, by the Department of Health as meeting all the requirements specified in the regulations. Mr. Kelly is, has his hand raised. Uh, Dennis, uh, you have something to say, sir? Yeah, I just wanted to make one minor clarification about the asbestos regulations. Unlike lead, which has a cutoff of 1978, uh, asbestos actually has no cutoff. So a facility built in 2016 will still require an asbestos inspection if the materials being disturbed are considered suspect. So all of your renovations could potentially have to have an asbestos inspection, depending on what is entailed. Thank you, sir. Um, so the uh, after the construction has been completed and um, the documentation will just say that it was built before 78, just, well, just for this purpose of this. And you showed that, um, that the, uh, the, the, the proper people did the renovations and it was done in a proper manner. Um, we would approve it and say, you know, um, everything has been submitted to us and and, and quite frankly, we'll go to Dennis on some things if we have any questions about anything to give his get his guidance on it. And then we would notify uh, you in writing that the we have approved the renovations as performed. Uh, and then I, you know, as far as I'm we're concerned, uh, DHS would be authorized to reimburse you for uh, that. 
um, renovation under the child care strong grants, according to their rules, not ours. Um, now, let's say you did not use the proper people to do your renovation. And we know this has already occurred. One of the things that we said is we would not, if it's not done correctly, according to law, that building cannot be used to, as a child care facility. And that's a statute. That's not child care statute, that's DEQ statute. We would say, you know, you need to go to DEQ because you didn't do it correctly. You can't use it, you cannot reopen and, and use this as a child care facility until DEQ says it's clear. And DEQ has a process where if you did the renovations improperly, um, they can um, guide you in having it uh, inspected so it can pass their requirements. And if it passes their requirements, they tell us ABC daycare, uh, you know, they didn't follow the rules they're supposed to, but we've gone in, gone in, uh, an assessment has been done, the building is clear, then we would say you're approved. And then you could go on and uh, get reimbursement from um, um, health, um, human services. So uh, that's basically what the way we're trying to um, do this. And if, if everybody follows it, the rules, then it's going to be, uh, it should be straightforward. Now, regarding the time restraints on when this must be be done and when it must be expended, that's Department of Human Services. We don't have anything to do about how they manage your money. So, uh, but we will work very hard with the child care providers that are doing renovations to their buildings uh, to um, meet any guideline, uh, deadlines that DHS has set up. But if you've been, a, you know, I don't know, because I, I just don't know if, if it has to be completed by a certain time or you just have to encumber the funds by a certain time. And I, I'm, I'm quite sure Carol could probably uh, you know, inform you more about that since I was not able to be on that, uh, on that um, webinar that uh, DHS had um, uh, regarding this. And that's why this meeting is being held because a lot of questions were raised about renovations. So uh, that basically is the process. Um, we, we, we tr we're not going to try to delay getting out there. And if you present things to us and, and follow, the, follow the guideline or the rules that, that have been set forth, um, you know, it, it should be a fairly painless uh, situation is when you vary from the requirements is when it becomes kind of, um, you know, problematic. Um, Carol, I think that's about all I have. Well, thank you so much, Festus. I really appreciate that. I guess the one thing I would ask that was a concern expressed on our Zoom call with DHS before is whether there's any way to expedite the approval from the Department of Health in light of the fact that DHS has said that these funds have to be expended by September of this year, which is a very short time frame. So the approval from the Department of Health before any renovations can begin uh, is, that's where the time pressure really comes. So uh, is there any way that those approvals can be expedited? Can these visits with inspectors be done remotely by Zoom? Can uh, no. these requests be bumped up to high priority somehow? Um, is there some way that can happen? Well, the thing is that, as you know, well, right now we, 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 are, we do have, we have lost staff uh, in a couple areas of the state. 
and uh, we're operating uh, understaffed, uh, but we also re are required uh, to do certain things, do our inspections, our renewals, and things like that. Uh, I do not believe that a virtual um, um, trying to figure out what's going on, but if they send us what we've asked for, the plans and you know the specification of what they're going to do, where they're going to do it, you know, um, that would help us. So when we go out and, and come out and visit and look at it and walk through and say, okay, yes, you're doing this wall here. We understand that. Um, it, it should be a, a fairly quick because once the licensing official does it and does their inspection and has all the documents, it would be sent, sent to their, their um, supervisor. And uh, then the supervisor and I will be in contact. Um, and if they say, yes, it looks like it's a pretty straightforward thing. And yes, they've got this and it was, you know, now as Mr. Kelly said is regardless of the age of the building, it must be inspected for asbestos. So, you know, if they have done that, if the facility has done that and gone on and gotten, I guess, did this would be an assessment or uh, for asbestos and lead? Basically, what I have been identifying is whether or not something needs to be inspected by a certified inspector and giving guidance on how to identify one. And then based on the results of that testing, that tells us whether or not a certified firm has to do the removal of the lead or asbestos that is going to be disturbed. Um, there was a question in the chat that asked, what is the definition of disturbed? And that means for like paint, if you're going to sand it or you're going to scrape it, that's disturbing it. But if you're going to remove it or cut into it, that's also disturbing. These are questions that, you know, I welcome you to send me information and I'll be more than happy to ex ask, explain whether or not your activity is disturbing an existing material. So Festus, I have a number of questions that have come into the chat. Um, so uh, if we could go right to those, that would be great. Um, the first one is, if your center received funds in February, do we still have to spend our funds by September? That's really a question to DHS, but on their Zoom call before, they have indicated that have to be spent within the grant period by the end of September of this year. Um, here are some other questions. And um, this is the one that um, spoke to the definition of disturb. Um, and I believe since you already answered that, we'll move to the next one. Is painting considered a major renovation? I think just like Dennis said, if you're going to sand the walls before you paint them, or do anything like that, that's just serving those walls. If you're just painting over, that's just encapsulation. Correct, Dennis? It, it, it's paint stabilization, not encapsulation. But okay. yes, it's just putting a new coating on it and that's not regulated. Is adding an awning to your building considered a major renovation? Well, to me, it's, it depends on what you have to do. If you're going to put you're going to put two brackets up there and nail it to the wall, nail it to the house, that's one thing. But if you're going to have to, uh, you know, take out wood and and, and uh, do whatever, you know, take things apart and uh, then install the brackets or the the the, the, uh, the anchoring equipment for the awning, um, you know, and it's more than 24 square feet, that would you know, be a, a major renovation. Uh, it, again, everything like this is, is case by case. It, uh, we have in our building, 
we have an awning. That awning is like 40 feet. You know, it's, it, it, it goes out from the building 30 feet and it goes underneath the building another 20 feet, you know, because our building is on stilts, but it's an awning. Um, you know, again, if we know what it is and they give us the specifications, then we can come out and take a look and sit there and say, ah, and if, and if it's, if it's, we have questions about it, then we can get with Dennis and say, you know, and then we would send the pictures and say, Hey, look, this is what, what they're going to do. do are we going to consider this a, a major renovation or, or not? And, and, and we, you know, uh, then we can go from there. Do you need prior approval for roof repair or roof replacement? I'm sorry, what was that now? Roof repair or roof replacement? That's normal um, everyday things, isn't it, Dennis? Actually, roofing is one of those areas where asbestos is of concern. So anything that involves the removal of existing roofing material uh, installation of a new roof. Uh, if you have an addition where they have to take part of the old roof off to tie in the new roof. Um, and if your repairs re require the removal of uh, some existing roofing materials, those are all asbestos regulated. So they would require an asbestos inspection. The one thing about it is if you just go over an existing roof with a new roof, that is not regulated. Yeah. So uh, we had a situation, I had a phone call today. They have a, a roof where somebody had to go up and basically put another layer of sealant on the roof. Well, they didn't take any of the old off, so that was not regulated. If they had had to cut in and take part of the old roof off, that would have made it regulated. Yeah, you know, I guess what the, the common uh, name of it is a nail over. You nail it over, you didn't put the new roof over the old roof. I had that done with my, one of my houses. And then when I had to have another roof done, the nail over and the original roof had to come off. And, and of course the, uh, the people that install those roofs, if they're reputable uh, roofing, they've, they've got the training to do it, so. So I think you've already addressed this one is painting the outside of your building a major renovation. Again, I think it also, if you start to scrape, scrape uh, uh, paint off because it's bubbling and stuff like that, uh, yes, it, it, it would be because you're, you're disturbing the, uh, the paint. So that way, wait, see, you could have a, a and I just, for sake of, uh, of a, um, example, you have an older building and it's been painted over four or five times. If you start scraping down that original paint that's under there at next to the wood could have a lot of lead in it. So if you're scraping it all off and getting down to good, you know, good wood again, so you can repaint it, then yes, that would be, you know, if you're going to be scraping uh, paint off, uh, that would be a major renovation. And Festus, you addressed this at the beginning, but someone asked again if you could define major renovations as stated in the regulations or reference where in the regulations that definition is. Well, it's it, regulations. I mean, the uh, major renovation is defined by DEQ. Um, and uh, my understanding is uh, it's a disturbance of 24 square feet or more. The Francis, oh, sorry, go ahead. Quick. For lead-based paint, it's 20 square feet, which is the same area as your average front door. And it doesn't have to be in one continuous place. If you remove a fascia board that's six inches wide and you take it off around the house, you've surpassed the 20 square feet because all you need is 40 linear feet of half inch wide board to reach the threshold. But for asbestos, it is literally three square feet of a friable material. 
these are technical terms, friability, encapsulation, uh, threshold mounts, things like that, that that is why I'm on this call to provide you with a contact at DEQ that can answer these questions per our regulations so that you do not have to worry about trying to learn what the regulations say. Yeah, and, and again, thank you, Dennis, very much. Uh, and again, this information was sent out to all child care providers in two previous emails, at least two previous emails. So I don't know if people haven't, they're not opening up their emails they get from us, um, you know, or, it, it, you know, we, we tell people, well, I never got it. So, well, you need to check your junk mail and, 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 you know, and all that kind of stuff, because, you know, depending on how you got your computer set up, it may go, you know, into the trash bin. Uh, but uh, like I said, this has been sent out. Now we can send it out again to everybody. In fact, I will send it out again to everybody with all the attachments from DEQ uh, explaining uh, all, all these things. That would be great, thank you. Is replacing your air conditioning units permissible? Yeah, you can. Yeah, well, if they're going to pay for it, yes. I mean, if it, you know, you know, um, we we don't determine whether uh, DHS is going to pay for it. Uh, so that'd be something that the uh, would be um, would be you know a DHS question whether they're going to pay to replace the air conditioner. Now, typically, when I had my air conditioner replaced. Every 99% of the workers outside, you know, they, they, they put in, a, they, well, they put in the new, uh, you know, the, the, they put in the condensers and stuff like that, but they didn't, it went on top of my existing, uh, the air conditioner went on top of my existing furnace. Uh, they did not have to route any, any more uh, uh, vents and ducts. Uh, they they were not up in the in the attic doing anything. Uh, they put the uh, compressor on a pad, hooked up the lines, and uh, put a power source to it. Installed a a thermostat where the previous thermostat was. Um, unless there's unless you're going to be doing a whole lot of things, of uh, uh, you know, tearing out walls to put new stuff in and stuff like that. I, you know, I don't, I don't think uh, the, um, the installing of an air conditioning unit would be, you know, cross the threshold. Uh, Dennis, um, you are correct, Festus, in that uh, almost always there is no, not enough work for it to be termed regulated. The only exception would be a facility that does not currently have central air and they want to have central air put in, then we may need to discuss things a little bit, but just replacing the air handling unit, the uh, refrigeration unit and the condensing unit uh, of an existing uh, system would not be regulated. So painting on top of old paint and laying floors on top of old floors is not disturbing. Is that correct? That is correct. With approval, can renovations be done to improve the daycare parking lot? That's a DEQ question. I mean, not a DEQ, a Department of Human Services question. You know, we don't, if you say, hey, we want to put in a, a we want to resurface our parking lot, okay. It's fine with us. Now, whether DHS is going to pay for it or not, that's up to you and them. Some of the things that centers are wanting to do are not required by licensure. Would it be helpful to just have the center discuss what they want to have done with the licensing official to see if they need approval? Because it's possible the Department of Health wouldn't have to approve it, and that would allow people to move quicker. Well, it all depends what they're doing. Well, I guess the, the question is, to find out whether or not approval is required on well, something. Yeah, but they I, could talk about what they're doing and then find out if approval is required. Well, if it's a, if it's a major renovation, approval is required. 
I would like to modify the sinks in the classrooms by installing bathroom cabinets and taking out the current counter, which is leaking. Is that permissible? Yes, it's permissible, but the thing is, I mean, that's whether it's going to be paid for by DHS is up to them. I guess Every, the question anything, is, the, I guess I, the question is to you whether or not it would be, you would have to approve that. Well, what they've told us that any renovations to the building, we have to approve it or they will not reimburse for it. I have a tree on my playground that needs to be removed due to recent weather conditions. I had three experts say the tree has shifted and will eventually fall. Um, I guess the question is, uh, can this be done? Again, <clears throat> we don't have a problem with you removing the tree. We don't consider that a renovation to the building. Okay. So, is you know, whether DHS will pay for it, you know, I mean, we had this last weather we had came, came through. We had trees, a couple of trees fell across fences. Right. And we, the facility was not hurt. The, the fence was in, in the playground area. Our response is you can't use the playground because the fence has been knocked down until the tree is removed and the fence is repaired. So you'll need to do indoor activities and we need a, an estimated time when you're going to have those repairs done uh, so you go into full operation and use the um, playground again. And with something like that, you go out, you take a picture, here's the tree, here's the tree not here anymore. Here's the fence where it's broken down, here's where the fence has been repaired. You're good to go. Start using your playground again. Is Window World automatically approved to remove, dispose, and replace windows that have been inspected and contain lead? Uh, window World is approved to do lead windows in child care facilities, yes. Um, what about fixing a metal roof? A metal bridge? A metal no. roof. Roof. Yeah. Um, it depends on what they're doing to the roof. If it involves the removal of the metal, it could be. It should be checked at a bare minimum. If it's just a, uh, let's say, replacing a panel or two or patching it, that is normal. That, that would not be regulated. But if they've got to take the whole roof off, because of, uh, let's say, a hailstorm has caused all kinds of pinhole leaks, um, then we would need to discuss it a little bit. So this question is, what if your roof was done in March of 2012? I That and a couple of other questions about can funds be used for utilities and can funds be used for certain things that are not renovations are really questions that we will forward to DHS for them to answer. But here's one for you. Can we paint while children are in the building or do we have to close down while painting? To me, I think it's really a common sense thing. We've had places where they were doing major painting and my response was you should do that on the weekends when the children are not there because the children some children will, could have uh, a reaction to the smell of the paint and things like that um you know and to me a, a lot of things can be done on the weekend um and it can be done in stages um you know um one week we end your you're painting two rooms Next weekend, you're paying another two rooms, and you don't uh, disturb the, the children. Uh, the, the fumes are pretty much, uh, if you ventilate the, the, the building, the fumes are pretty much gone the time that the children come back for Monday. And to me, it's more a common sense um, um, uh, situation, uh, but 
children can have um, reactions to paint fumes. What as if you well don't, as parents. Okay. What if you don't have any shade on your playground? Can we add a covering or some kind of uh, covering with picnic tables? I'm sorry, what was that question? If you don't have shade on your playground, can we add a shade covering? Sure, I mean, I mean, whether DHS pays for it or not, you know, we, we don't have any problem. We, we have people that have put up um, um, shelters, uh, you know, a uh, pole, like a pole barn. And uh, so children can get out from, uh, from the sun if they want to. Uh, while they're on the playground, things like that. We don't have any problems with that as long as they're, they're, they're uh, you know, uh, safe and, and uh, uh, well-constructed and, uh, and, and things like that. So, but again, that's sort of like a case-by-case -case basis. Tell us what you want to do and how you're going to do it, and then we can sit there and try to make a, a, a decision that's uh, amenable to both of us. Is installing a TPO roof a major renovation? Installing a what? Uh, the question says TPO roof. I'm not sure what that reference is. Yeah, I don't know what it is either. Okay. Um, What date was lead paint, lead-based paint discontinued, or is it still in paint today? 1972. 1978. Um, so this is the fourth time this question has come up. So we can paint over old paint, and we can lay floor over old floor. Yes, if you do not disturb the paint, like by by uh, scraping it off or sanding it down, you just paint over it. That's not a major, that, that's, you know, that's not a major renovation. If you're just laying a, a new floor over an old floor and not tearing up the floor, you know, tearing up the existing floor and things like that, that's just like a roof, it's a nail over. It's, you know, it, it, it's, you know, you're not disturbing anything. Centers are receiving emails, but they want to know how it's being interpreted by the Department of Health. The licensing officials are all saying something different, and centers want some. That why Tom? And centers want some consistency concerning what they can and can't be approved to do to be in compliance with the Department of Health. So well, I guess you have, to, you have to tell us exactly what's being. Uh, misspoken uh, uh, you know because you know so i i don't know we try to we try to be consistent and uh the, the people that our our staff um have gotten the uh, same uh, messages that we've sent out to all the other providers and uh if they have a um a concern about what the licensing official is is informing them they think needs to be done, they need to have that referred to the, the licensing official supervisor. And then we will take it under consideration. And if there's somebody uh, providing um, incorrect information, we will um, work very hard to correct that situation. But just to saying that, well, we're getting mixed messages and all that's okay. Who's giving you the message? What's the message you're give, being given? And, and so we can sit there and pinpoint where the corrections need to be made. Will you provide contact information for sending the information needed for review? For what now? Contact information for where the information needs to be sent for review. I'm assuming the question is you, you you send it to your licensing official. Okay. What about building shelves and putting up a wall? 
Well, putting up walls will probably disturb some things. Uh, uh, building a bookshelf and put it, you know, anchoring it to the wall, uh, I don't think would be, you know, considered a major renovation because you're not disturbing anything. You just you you you've got a a shelf, a bookshelf, and you anchor it to the wall. Now, if you're going to be tearing out sheetrock and all that kind of stuff, yes, it's going to be a you know, it's going to be a major renovation. What about adding a covering for our drop-off line to protect students and parents during bad weather? Again, that's one of those things that you, you have to see what you're going to do and what it's going to entail before you can determine whether it's going to be, be uh, a major renovation or disturbance of, of the existing uh, structure. This is why this is confusing. We understood that the only thing the Department of Human Services was requiring approval for from the Department of Health was anything required for licensure. Centers are waiting to get approval on stuff that is not required for licensure. This, this is not what we've been told. That was the original thing that said that the Department of Health had to require the facility to fix something for it to be reimbursed by the Child Care Strong Grants. They recanted that and said now they will reimburse for uh, those, reimburse those, those allowable renovations that we approve, but we have to approve them. And in our regulations, it says that before you know, um, uh, renovate major, all proposed, all proposed construction and or major renovations has to be submitted to us with plans and specifications before it's undertaken. And that, that rule has been there for 20 years. I think you answered this one already, Festus, but another question is here about, do you need approval to add shade to your playground. To have what approved what? Shade, a shade structure. No, I mean, all you have to do, you just need to, that, that, we don't consider that a major renovation. If you're, you're, you're building a structure uh, to put up, you know, for shade, you know, well, that's just something that the, we would like to know about it because we don't want children out there while they're building it. But, um, you know, if it's some type of prefab um, construction that you can put in, you anchor it uh, so it won't blow away and, and things like that, we don't have any problems with that. If window if were, it, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, and the only other thing I would say is you, you really need, I don't know how big these things are going to be, but you might also look at your local ordinances about construction of something. So you won't be in violation of the city or county ordinances, you know, and, uh, you know, and have problems with them, so. If Window World is automatically approved to replace windows with lead, does the state still have to come inspect and give approval? Well, if they're submitting to us that that the specifications and what they're going to be doing, that we're going to replace all the windows in the building with lead-free windows because we have lead contamination. Yeah, you know, the, these windows have lead in them and stuff like that. Then, you know, that's pretty quick. It says, yes, go on and do it. Just to make sure that while they're disturbing all these windows and everything, children aren't there. When doing repairs, does the temporary relocation for children have to be inspected? Yes, it does. And also you need to make sure you're not in violation of any zoning ordinances that might be there. And, and the location site must be inspected for fire, fire inspection. The last question I see here uh, indicates it's really for DHS. So we will forward it along with the other ones for DHS to DHS. But the question is just that 
we need a list of things that we can use for the funds and a list of things that we can't use the funds for. Um, I know that um, uh, there on this Zoom and also on the Zoom we had with DHS, there were a lot of very specific questions from providers about what's allowable and what's not. Um, so um, I'm gonna give it just a minute to see if we have another question posed in the chat. But um, at the moment, that is all the questions that I see. Um, oh, here's one. Uh, no. Prior to opening, didn't we have lead and soil tests done? Uh, and why do we have to do it again uh, to paint, to sand off paint? Festus, I'll answer this one if you want me to. Yes, sir. OK. To get, obtain your licensure, you are required to do a lead risk assessment or a lead hazard screen. The testing for a lead risk assessment or hazard screen is very limited to those surfaces that are likely to create lead dust or paint chips and therefore a hazard. It is not all inclusive testing all painted surfaces for the presence of lead. So there are many surfaces in a facility that could contain lead that are not tested in a risk assessment or lead hazard screen. Also, that requirement for that lead test is limited to those facilities built before 1965. That is a determination based on uh, most likely need or creation of a hazard in a facility. Now, the regulations that banned lead from paint for use in a residence or child occupied facility did not take effect until 1978. So even though you had the lead test done, it was not a lead test that was all inclusive and comprehensive. And there are many facilities built after 1965, but before 1977 that have not even had a lead risk assessment. What we are trying to do is make sure that whatever materials you are disturbing are checked for lead. If you have already checked that surface that you are going to disturb, then it would not necessarily have to be checked again. But in all likelihood, most facilities have materials that they are planning to disturb that have not yet been checked and therefore require the lead inspection. When do you need approval for roof replacement? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take a shot at a part of that one. Uh, all roofs pretty much have the opportunity to contain asbestos. Remember, asbestos has never been banned and is in the products that are on the market today. Therefore, if you are doing a roof replacement and you're tearing the old roof off, asbestos must be checked. Even a metal roof will have caulking and tar used to seal seams and penetrations in the roofing material, like where a vent, a chimney, the uh, electrical stack penetrate the roof, there is going to be sealants applied. Whether or not it contains asbestos, we do not know until the testing is complete. Asbestos? Yeah, um, the... Um I was sitting there. I just I saw that in the chat. The, the definition for that uh, that uh, TPO, TPO is a rubber roofing overlay for previous tar roofing. Tar roofing is not used anymore, so I need approval. Festus, do, do I need I approval? Mean, well, I I was going to say I'll answer that from an asbestos standpoint. Um. If they have to take the old roofing off, it frequently has multiple layers, including asbestos in it. 
but even though they put a rubber membrane down, they seal it along the edging and the flashing with a tar that frequently has asbestos in it. That's why even a TPO roof has to have an asbestos inspection. Is putting in new toilets and sinks okay? That's not yes. regulated by us at EQ. Yeah. I'm sorry, Festus, was that? Yeah, I mean, the main thing is what, if, if, if they're saying, hey, I'm doing renovation, I'm gonna put all new toilets in my, in my, in, in my building. The way we understand it is the, and the way we were told is that, and, uh, uh, and, and what DHS is, is, is requiring for us to do is to approve those replacements. You know, and that should be, you know, we're going to replace all, all we're going to do is replace all the toilets in the, in the building and all the sinks in the building. And we're not going to disturb anything. We're not going to be tearing up linoleum. We're not going to be taking out walls. We're not going to be sanding walls or anything like that. Then I would say, you know, we say, yes, you know, that, that, that's a good thing to do. You know, and we approve replacing your toilets and, and sinks. Then, whether they pay for it or not is something totally different. But they told us that we had to approve whatever renovations that were going to be requested to be paid for by child care strong grant money. Can we get the can we get the regulations that apply to everything that you're asking for? Do what now? This, this is the question. Can we get the regulations that apply to everything you are asking for? The I think they want guidance for what they can and can't do. I don't think that's the regulations are on the website. We've sent copies of the regulations to every child care provider in the state. We've sent um, um, <clears throat> we've sent at least two memo, two emails to every child care provider in the state regarding renovations. Everything is done on a case by case basis. Because somebody's saying, I'm, all I'm going to do is install a toilet. Okay, install a toilet. Somebody else is going to say, well, I'm going to install a toilet, but I'm going to tear out all this linoleum and put down new linoleum when I install my toilet. That's different. So, you know, everything is done on a case by case basis. And we have honestly tried to provide all the information that is needed. And if you have questions, you contact your, your licensing official. If you don't get an answer that you like from them, say, I want to speak to your um, supervisor. And the licensing officials are authorized to give the supervisor's uh, cell phone number where you can contact them directly. But again, the first thing we've asked people to do is, if you're going to do renovations, you notify us, give us what you want to do, how you're going to do it, and give us the specifications of what's going to be done, and we'll review it. And if we have to come out and take a look at it, we will. If we don't have to, in our opinion, you know, we can approve it. Uh, then and we'll put it. We'll put the approval in writing. If we make a mistake, we will stand by our, our making a mistake. But you know, it, 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 we don't have any hidden agenda. But we will give you in writing that this this as described is approved. And if you do something other than what is described, and something happens about it because of that then the child care provider 
will have to take responsibility for doing something they said they weren't going to do. Would we need approval to construct an additional new playground area? If you're, if, I don't know, that's the DHS question. Does DHS want us to approve a playground area? We'll, we'll approve a playground area, but you know, we're, we don't consider that a major renovation to the building. All right, um, one last question, Festus. Uh, in light of the short time frame that these renovations are having to meet, um, would you support us pushing DHS to extend the grant period? Uh, HHS guidance says these funds can go to September of 2023. Um, so uh, an extension of the grant period would facilitate the process providers need to go through to get approval from licensure for these renovations. I, I have no problem saying, you know, we have, you know, if, if people are having problems getting things done, that's, a, again, that's DHS controls that money. They control the time frames. They're the ones that said, and because of our regulations, they, they base it on the regulations, um, that we have to approve the renovations because it's in our regulations we have to approve right. the renovations. Right. So that's why we're in the ball game now. Right, and that's the that's what is uh, creating a real difficult time frame for providers to meet. So um, we're going to urge them to consider well, see, extending that time frame. Quite frankly, we were not brought into the in thing about the renovation stuff till later. You know, you know. So we're 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 playing catch up too because of. Um, it was not done, that was not done um, when the grants were said to be, you know, were said to be, do, be, be done, uh, you know, that we're going to do the grants. We didn't, you know, and what happened is, uh, what happens is that, again, when it was first done, we were told that the only way they will approve payment is if we cited them during an inspection that this needed to be fixed and redone. And we typically, unless there's holes in the wall or torn up a linoleum or boards loose in the floor uh, or um, uh, mold in the ceiling or something like that, we don't necessarily cite that because they say, hey, I want to do a, I want to knock out this wall. Okay. We don't have any problem with knock out a wall and make it bigger. You know, just, you know, and, 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 and things like that. But we didn't, we had very few sightings of repairs that had to be made uh, because of an inspection. And then people with the grants, they want to do a lot more stuff. You tearing down the wall, you can do it. We're not requiring you to do it because of a violation during an inspection. See, that, that, and then that's when DHS backed off that and said, if we approve the renovate, any renovations, then you know, within the limits, of the grant rules, they would pay for it. But the limit to the rules, we don't know all the all those limits. You know, if, if the thing is, I'm being facetious here. If DHS said you have to paint your walls yellow, and you told us. I want to paint the walls. Okay, you paint them. You paint them green. And then you apply, and he said, well, Department of Health approved us to paint, paint the walls. We sure did. And DHS says, yes, but you didn't paint them yellow. You painted them green. So we're not paying for it. 
And that's an excellent segue into a comment that came into the chat. It asks, is there any way to have a joint meeting with the Department of Health and the Department of Human Services so providers can get true guidance on the requirements and policy around the stabilization grant? Centers are trying to do what's required and be in compliance with both agencies. Having these Zoom meetings without both agencies is making it difficult. And I just wanna let everyone on the chat know that I invited DHS to be part of this meeting. Um, uh, but they did not respond that um, they would participate. So we tried to get both of them on this and we'll try again. But I do think it would be really helpful to providers to have both since as you point out, Festus, DHS is making the decisions about allowability for expenditure of these funds. And several of the questions that came into the chat that were about whether or not you could spend funds on things that are not renovations, for, for example, utilities. Um, we're gonna refer those questions back to DHS to get an answer. We submitted all the questions that came in on our Zoom call with DHS previously. Um, and we're planning to get a Zoom call with DHS for follow-up to get answers to those questions. Um, but I appreciate that comment about a joint meeting with both agencies and um, we'll try to get that on the calendar as soon as possible. We, we are not opposed to have a joint Zoom meeting with providers. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll say this, you know, this is a little bit different, Alyssa. You know, we, we had the regulation amendments we, we did because of federal requirements for background checks and other things that were happening in, in um, our, our um, uh, regulate our um, database stuff. We had six Zoom meetings. About 500 people attended. There well, are I know, and 202 people are on this call today. So you can see there's a great interest in trying to get answers to these questions. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing is, there are 1,493 child care facilities in the state. We had over 400 people attend the Zoom meetings in total. So that's not a good percentage of the people that operate or directors of child care facilities. And I get calls every day about the regulation amendments. And when I ask them, did they attend it? No, I didn't have time. So, you know, and, and we put it, it's on the, we're actually going to even do some more stuff. We got we had frequently asked questions, and then we're getting ready to put that on the website too to help people about the regulation amendments. But the thing is, we we offer these these meetings and stuff like that. And on my account, I can have up to a thousand people on a Zoom meeting. So I'm I'm quite sure yours is like that too, Carol. Uh, if you wanted to try to reach out for a whole lot of people. But I think the highest we had on any Zoom meeting was like 207 people on it. And we had six of these meetings. Well, thank you for making that information available. And again, I wanna thank you for being on our Zoom meeting today and for offering to be on a joint one with DHS. We'll get with you to schedule that. Um, and again, to everyone who joined, I want to thank you so much for being on the Zoom call. We were recording this and we will share the recording with anyone who wasn't able to join. And like I said, we will forward the questions that were really DHS questions to DHS for responses. And as soon as we can get a date set for an additional Zoom meeting to get those questions answered, we'll let you know. Yeah. And, and, and uh, Carol, uh, you know, I want to thank uh, Mr. Kelly coming today. Um, he's a wealth of knowledge. I've worked with him for probably 20 years now. And, and it, 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 you know, uh, the main thing that 
all of this is about the safety of the children, and and that's paramount in in, in this in, in this um, in this day and age. Uh, the um, if you if you need to have anybody send out, well, of course I know you do. Uh, you have it because I provide you the email lists and stuff like that with the for the facilities. But if you need help distributing anything uh, regarding this meeting or anything else, as you you know, I'll be glad to send it out because I do that to anybody that has a legitimate um, uh, request. And, and uh, we are trying to keep people informed as best we can of what's happening in child care. So anytime uh, we're at your service. Thank you so much. And thanks again to everyone for joining us today.